I ask you, what are some of the things that you know of, that you've heard? What are some of the characteristics of ghosts, please? They float. They Transparent. float. Transparent. 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 Anything else? Friendly. Friendly? <laughs> you're talking about Casper, definitely. I don't know if every single ghost that people have talked about through history fits in that category. Anything else? Trouble yeah. Souls. Yeah, yeah Trouble Souls. We're talking about characteristics, not their origin, but characteristics, things physical or otherwise, characteristics of ghosts. What are some other things besides? We mentioned transparent, mm -hmm. mentioned they float. They can go through uh, walls. Go through walls. Thank you, Jim. They can move things. Not things pale. They can move things. Pale. Ability to move, to move through solids. Definitely something that people have known. We don't say the ghosts open doors and walk into a room, they just appear and disappear. Move and travel. It's not linear. By and large, we think of a ghost can be anywhere, wherever it's haunted, and not necessarily in a linear fashion move from point A to point B. Appearance, as Jay pointed out, they tend to be transparent or uh, pale. Mm -hmm. Type of body that they have. It's, it's, it's a non-ethereal body. It's not something that's corporeal, something you can touch. Not the one I saw. Ooh, Very good. And I'm going to ask you about that in a little bit. <laughs> communicate. How they communicate. They, there is some communication. Sometimes there are eerie noises that come along. Sometimes there's actual talking even. <laughs> nourishment. <laughs> nourishment. Do ghosts, as far as we know, <laughs> do ghosts take any type of nourishment? No. Okay. <laughs> Keep that in mind because that plays an important that plays Blood. an important part <laughs> in to understand whether the laws of nature allow ghosts to exist or not. Mm. Let us review the laws of nature. <laughs> All matter has mass and volume. Anything that exists, anything that unless it's classified as energy, has mass which means if we were to put it on a scale, it has something there. It has molecules, something that's quantifiable. Or volume, it takes up space. Something and that's true regardless of what type of matter it is. Have you ever put a ghost on a scale? That's why we're going to see first. We're going to see whether that even question is possible, such as how many angels can dance on the head of the pin or not. <laughs> states of matter. These are the four states of matter. People are familiar with solids, liquids, and gases. No explanation need there. Plasma has nothing to do with plasma TV. Plasma is another state of matter, and what it is, it's a superheated gas that acts like a liquid. The sun is made of plasma. That's a fourth state of matter, which is neither gas nor liquid. There is nothing else. There is no other state of matter. One thing about the laws of nature, they are universal. They apply in China, they apply in Mars, they apply in Brooklyn. Sometimes I have my doubts, but they apply in Brooklyn. They apply on any planet in our solar system. They apply in a different galaxy. That we know of. Qualified with that we know of. Now, the burden of proof is to find the exception to the rule. Having not found the exception, we assume the rule to be universal. The law of conservation of matter. Mm. Very important. Think for a second. Everything that there is on Earth today was on Earth five billion years ago, was on Earth two billion years ago. All that has happened is a transformation of that matter. With the exception of the occasional meteor that lands on Earth. It means when you look around at the skyscrapers, when you look around at the fact that there are six billion people and a million years ago there were only maybe a hundred thousand, what does that mean? Everything that you see has been some, some, some way, shape, or form a transformation of the matter that exists. When you take a baby, you say a baby grows it to be an adult. How does that happen? Matter is transformed. The food that the baby takes in are converted into proteins which allow the baby to grow. Mm -hmm. The total matter continues in existence. This is, this is very important. No matter cannot be created nor destroyed, <clears throat> only transformed. What makes things visible? Your eyes. What makes things visible, it's not just your eyes, it's the light that's reflected. Light reflected. Therefore, you can see me and you can see my eyes because light is reflecting off my eyes into yours. Mm. If I am invisible to you, you are invisible to me. Because in order, for, in order for me to be invisible, it means that the light rays are not reaching your eyes. Therefore, I can't see you either. It mm. means it's not possible to be in a room invisible and still be able to see everything else. 
There's, there, there have been some experiments they've done with trying to make something invisible. What they've done is, on a molecular basis, they've been able to bend the light rays around. <coughs> now, if you're sitting on that object, you'd have to be the size of uh, one millionth the size of the fleet to be able to do that. But if you were on that object, you also would not be able to see your surroundings because light is bending around it. Therefore, it's not interacting with you. That's why you can appear invisible. So the idea of a cloaking device only makes sense if you don't care that you can't see what's out there either. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank This object will remain on this table for all eternity unless some force causes it to move. Now, the force could be me pushing it around. It could be vibration. The table is moving. It could even be, as, as I could use, if this were made of a metal, for instance, such as iron, and I could use a magnet, there's a force acting on it which moves it. This cannot move without a force. By the same token, if I were to take this and throw it, it will not stop moving unless there's a force that acts on it. What force would cause it that you know of would cause it to stop? Gravity. 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 If we were in space and threw it, it would go on forever. Until, somewhere, shape or form, gravity acts upon it or, or it hits something. Like a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> the second law of motion is action and reaction. It means that for every action, there's a reaction. What does that mean in real life? For me to go up the stairs, any, any flight of stairs, the only reason I can go up a flight of stairs is because when I place my foot on it and I push against it, it pushes against me. <coughs> Why is that important? It means that if mm. I, if my hand goes through this wall, my hand will also go through the floor. And if my body can go through this wall, this floor cannot sustain me. I would also go through. Mm. Mm. Law of conservation mm. of energy. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Energy can only be converted. Again, you cannot have energy from nothing. It has to come from someplace else. When I take my cell phone and I make a call, that's a certain type of energy, which we'll get into, called electromagnetic energy. Where does the energy that actually goes out over the waves come from? It comes from the battery. The battery is stored chemical energy. Now. When those waves get to John's phone, and John listens to it, the electromagnetic energy is then converted to sound energy, sound waves, which he, then can, which he then can interpret, and in his brain it's converted again to an electrical impulse which he interprets. In other words, every energy, everything that you see must come from something else. The energy that we get when we eat a piece of fruit comes from the sun. Through photosynthesis, it takes that energy, converts it to matter, and from matter, we eat it and it's converted back to energy. So energy can be converted only from other forms of energy or to matter and from matter. But it has to come from somewhere. There are only four known types of energy. As far as we can tell from our understanding of physics, these are the only ones that there are. Chemical energy, that's the energy stored in what Myrna's eating right now. She's going to give her the energy to go home and walk her dog tonight. <laughs> Kinetic energy. It's the energy of motion. If I take this and I fling it across the room, the energy that it has as it moves is kinetic energy. There is electromagnetic energy. That's the energy of the sun. That's the energy of microwave communication. That's the energy that powers this light. Nuclear energy. That's the energy for, that you take from splitting an atom and blowing everything to smithereens. Or it's also the energy of the sun. When it takes two different atoms, fuses them together, and creates tremendous amount of heat and electromagnetic radiation. That's all there is. Yes? What about thought energy? Thought energy are electrical impulses in your brain. Therefore, it falls under electromagnetic energy. Going out to move objects? That falls into the... <coughs> not